Hello there. Welcome to video 152 from Sumit Academy. I do hope that you have subscribed to my channel. Do subscribe now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. And do remember to like and share this video too. To make your task a little easier, here is a complete list of all the 152 videos available on my YouTube channel. The list is divided into the playlists under which they are available. Do have a look. In this video, we shall study the Telegraph Act 1885. Yes, I can hear you saying, why bother studying it? There is no telegraph in India anymore. True, but thanks to a provision in the Indian Telegraph Act 1885 that allows government in public interest to intercept messages. A new law may not be required at all to find out what you are doing on WhatsApp or Facebook. The Indian Telegraph Act 18 is the enabling legislation in India which governs the use of wired and wireless telegraphy, telephones, teletype, radio communication and more important digital data communications. It gives the government of India exclusive jurisdiction and privileges for establishing, maintaining, operating, licensing and oversight of all forms of wired and wireless communications within Indian territory. It also authorizes government law enforcement agencies to monitor and or intercept communications and tap phone lines under conditions defined within the Indian constitution. The act came into force 
on the 1st of October 1885. Since that time, numerous amendments have been passed to update the Act to respond to changes in technology. A simple directive defining which agency can tap phones and for how long, who are the people whose phones may be tapped and under what circumstances, and also what happens to the accumulated data can take care of all the requirements of national security. The 1885 Act authorizes only the government to intercept any cases of tapping by private parties are illegal. The Act warrants interception in the event of an emergency or in public interest by a central or state government in the interests of the sovereignty and integrity of India, the security of the state, friendly relations with foreign states or public order or for preventing incitement to the commission of an offence for reasons to be recorded in writing. Though the Act was originally passed for telegraph, an amendment since then covers all existing modes of communication, including telephone, cell phone and internet. Aha! Now you understand the importance of this Act. And the next time someone is foolish enough to forward or create or like anti-national material over social media, remember this act comes into play. To go back to its roots, the Telegraph Act 1885 is a colonial legislation that was brought forth to amend and collate all the laws relating to telegraphs in India. With several amendments, it has now come to govern wired and wireless telephony and digital communication in our country. This act has often been in the news with rising concerns over privacy and safety of digital communications. The main object of the Telegraph Act was to give power to the government to install telegraph lines on private as well as public property. Since then, the Act has gone through numerous amendments in order to accommodate new communication technologies. This is evident from the current definition of telegraph under the Telegraph Act. It defines telegraph and now pay attention as any appliance, instrument, material or apparatus used or capable of use for transmission or reception of signs, signals, writing, images and sounds or intelligence of any nature by wire, visual or other electromagnetic emissions radio wave or Hertzian waves, galvanic, electric or magnetic means. Just for your understanding, radio waves or Hertzian waves means electromagnetic waves of frequencies lower than 3000 gigacycles per second, propagated in space without artificial guide. This act has a very wide application, but mostly it is being invoked with regard to working of telephones, which is a subject of great consumer interest in modern civilized society, because it affects almost every individual. The mobile cell phones, which have revolutionized the whole communication system, are also covered by the term telephones. Let us now have a look at the framework of the Act. The Indian Telegraph Act 1885 contains six parts. 
Part 1 deals with definitions of key words used in the Telegraph Act. The definition of the term telegraph has since been amended twice, once in 1961 and then in 2004. This section also defines local authority as any municipal committee or district board. Part 2 of the Act grants government the exclusive privilege with respect to telegraph. It also gives power to issue license to private operators to offer telegraph services. Part 2A was inserted in the Telegraph Act by the Indian Telegraph Amendment Act 2003. It deals with setting up of the Universal Service Obligation Fund, the USOF, for the purpose of meeting universal service obligation. The money received in this fund is credited to the Consolidated Fund of India and is administered according to the rules of the central government. The purpose of this fund is to ensure that the services of the telecom sector reaches even the remote and rural areas. Section 5 is commonly known as the wiretapping clause. It grants the privilege to the central government to take possession of licensed telegraphs and order interception of messages in cases of public emergencies or in pursuance of public interest. Now, this is a surveillance power given to the government in order to prevent misuse of technology. It allows the government to tap phones, trace IP addresses, etc. whenever they need to. The third important power given in Part 2 is in Section 8. This is the power to revoke licenses granted for establishing telegraph lines if the licensee is found in violation of any term of the agreement with the government. Part 3 deals with procedures and guidelines to be followed for installing and maintaining communication equipment. It also lays down guidelines for setting up communication devices in private property and also the procedure for resolution of any dispute which may arise between the service provider and the owner of the private property. Under this Act, the Telegraph Authority can alter the position of gas and water pipes or drains when exercising its power of setting up telegraph lines. If it comes in conflict with the local authority in doing so, the central government can appoint an officer to mediate the dispute. The Telegraph Authority can also undertake alteration of any property such as trees that come in the way of establishing telegraph lines. Part 4 of the Act deals with the penalties for violating provisions of the Act. Now, these offences can be divided into three parts. Violations rela relating to unauthorized use of telegraph lines, violations pertaining to opposing the building of new telegraph lines, and third, offences relating to the unlawful interception of telegraph messages. And finally, part 5 deals with other supplementary provisions. Whenever it appears to the state government that any act causing or likely to cause wrongful damage to any telegraph is repeatedly and maliciously committed in any place and that the employment of an additional police force in that place is thereby rendered necessary, the state government may send such additional police force as it thinks fit to the place 
and employ the same so long as in the opinion of the government the necessity of doing so continues. The inhabitants of the place shall be charged with the cost of the additional police force and the district magistrate shall, subject to the orders of the state government, assess the proportion in which the cost shall be paid by the inhabitants according to his judgment of their respective means. All monies payable under subsection 2 shall be recoverable either under the warrant of a magistrate by the distress sale of the movable property of the defaulter within the local limits of his jurisdiction or by suit in any competent court. The state government may by order in writing define the limits of any place for the purposes of this section. The procedures and guidelines for lawful interception was laid down in the case of the People's Union for Civil Liberties versus the Union of India. In this case, the Supreme Court ruled that telephone tapping is a serious invasion upon an individual's privacy. However, lawful interceptions can be carried out under certain circumstances mentioned in the wiretapping provision. This kind of lawf lawful interception has to be car carried in conformity with certain guidelines which will act as a check on indiscriminate wiretapping by the law enforcement agencies. It also directed the government to make rules and procedures for carrying out lawful interception of communication. In addition to that, it also laid down the basic guidelines for such interception. The main guidelines are that an order for law interception can only be made by the Home Secretary to the Government of India and Home Secretaries of State Governments. In urgent situations, the power may be delegated to an officer of the Home Department of Government of India and State Governments and such officer should not be below the rank of Joint Secretary. Let's finally have a look at the importance and impact of this act. While seeming archaic, since telegraphs were shut down in 2013, this act provides a foundational legislation that governs India's digital communication system. It is now being interpreted with the principle and the spirit of the act rather than its words and actual text. Though there may have been many calls to scrap this law for following repressive procedures for interception of communications that violate human rights, there has been a progressive change in the act through amendments to keep up with the advances in technology. We may feel that this violation of a privacy is not good for society. But, my dear viewers, national interests and the interest of the safety and the security of the nation are far greater than the need for individual privacy. After all, a single like, a single forward or a single message that you create can and has caused havoc in society and in our relationship with other countries. So, in the interests of our nation, the government really has no way but to enforce the existing laws as they are. Well, that's all from me in this video. This video is based on the information freely available on the internet. No originality is claimed for the same. The intention of this video is only to prepare candidates for answering examination questions on the subject and not for any financial gain. Do like and share this video 
and do subscribe to my channel now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. Till later then, cheerio!